and I have just this overwhelming sensation of this is what I was born to do. And if I don't do this, I will regret every day of my life if I don't pursue this as my path. So how many residencies did you apply for? I don't remember the exact, but it was somewhere between six and nine wow. applications. Okay. Um, many of them were local in the lower Michigan area, and uh, I only got asked to one. Wow. One residency. How did that make you feel? Stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I felt so stupid. I felt, I felt like I'm an idiot for wasting time in pharmacy school. You know, I felt like, Who's gonna give a chance on this schmuck with a 3.3 or 3.2 GPA? Yeah. You know, and I, I felt really scared. I felt like the only people who are gonna give me a shot are jobs that I'm not going to like. And so all of my eggs were in one basket and uh, I, I just was petrified that they were gonna say no to me. But. Obviously, we know you, you did the residency, you went yeah. in the interview. Spoiler alert, yeah. <laughs> I, I did get the residency. Let's talk about difficulty. So, what was, dif what was difficult about my residency was that this was a newer one, and so things weren't established well. Okay. So, the opportunities that were presented to me as my rotations were not fleshed out. I, I didn't really get to practice pharmacy in many ways. So I had to create my own opportunities for myself. I actually had to go, I went to a completely different institution. Uh, not the institution that you know I was doing a residency at, I just made a connection and I said, can I please shadow you? Can I please you know, make a rotation with you or something? And that's actually how I got my Amcare experience was mm. through making connection and getting training from this guy and that I mean, that made me feel really confident in my ability to actually perform patient care, whereas before I felt like I was just wasting time. It was very, very difficult because it made me feel like no one's going to hire me, you know, as a pharmacist. Um, but through, through this really difficult situation, I was able to create those experiences for myself, which ultimately led to the qualifications I needed for the job that I got after. Yeah. So. You know, during residency, it sounded like you, you made a lot of great opportunities for yourself and those opportunities led to you feeling confident, right? Um, so you had this expectation of your post-residency job, mm -hmm. right? How that looks. Yeah. Can, can you describe, you know, what that job was like and how did you feel on the job? <laughs> Uh, my job did not line up with my expectations, what I thought pharmacy would be, or just what I thought I would get out of it. You know, I don't, th I don't think we are taught from a young age or even as adults that we should get something out of our job. Yes, it's usually money and compensation, but there should be some sort of fulfillment that mm -hmm. comes with your work. If there's not, it's pretty easy to get burned out, hate your job, hate your life. And I felt that within about six months. Wow. Yeah, I, I hated my job. I wouldn't say that I had a toxic attitude, but I certainly felt defeated. I felt trapped, like I was in this cage that I couldn't escape. And if I tried rattling it to see if I could escape, if I could do something different in my day job, I would get the wrath of the owner or the person outside of the cage. I felt um, just distraught. I'd come home from work and I would sit on the couch and I'd look at my wife and I would say, please just don't talk to me. <laughs> Be not because of anything that she would say or do, but because I was afraid of what, how I may attack her verbally. And because I felt like any, the smallest request from my wife, Megan, would be like asking for me to move a mountain because I felt so much stress and anxiety and worry. And I would go into work the next day worrying about what awful thing may happen. You're, you're in this position. 
you know, you're not happy, I am assuming, <laughs> wasn't meeting your expectations. Like, what, what did you do during that time? Well, besides feeling miserable, um, one of the escapes that I had was my commute. Hmm. You know, I had a commute every day and I got tired of listening to the radio after a few months. And I just started listening to books and I discovered podcasts. And so I dove deep into podcasts. And one book that affected my life in a big way in college was How to Win Friends and Influence People. Mm -hmm. And that's like so clickbaity, <laughs> you know, <laughs> for the today's age. But I realized by reading this book that um, I'm not treating the people in this world the way I want to be treating them. Um, I realize I'm a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> and I really need to change the way I show people love and interact with people. And that first book kind of started this journey of self-development, most people would call it. Self-help, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. And it's funny because I've always been like a skeptical of all that stuff. like. That's for losers, that's for loonies. And like, I, I, I bet, I, I dove in, I listened to every podcast that I could about this information, about leadership, self-development. And I discovered, hey, this is some cool stuff. And I feel like I could do these things. And I learned about business and I learned about people who did fulfilling work and loved what they did and it created the lifestyles that they wanted and I just had never heard that before I never had been taught that and it was kind of shocking to me like like almost like I'm watching a movie you know like this is reality but I'm seeing it for someone else and so I put a lot of my creative energy a lot of my pent-up frustration from my job into different side endeavors. Uh, I sold baby strollers <laughs> on eBay. I made stickers that I sold on Etsy. Um, I did online marketing. I made websites for people. I consulted people. I made podcasts. Um, I eventually landed on coaching and creating content online as being something that I really enjoyed and I felt fulfilled by this work. So, so, so all those different things that you tried, like, why were you trying all the, they, they're, they seem very disconnected, <laughs> yeah. a lot of different things. Like what, what were you looking for per se? I was looking for work that made me feel alive. That just made me feel okay. like I'm making a difference and I'm not just a part of a cog in a machine, you know? I felt so stuck in my job that no matter what I would try or do, I would still be stuck doing the same things that I was doing. And that was a really tough place to be. And I didn't want to accept that that was my life, that this was for now forever going to be what I did. Um, so I rejected it and just said, well, I'm going to try to create something and if it becomes a new job for me or if I get a job because of my efforts then sweet that's that's the ultimate thing I still had this long-term vision in my mind that I was gonna be an academic because I know I love teaching I love speaking I love students and I could get a lot of satisfaction from it but because of my job I just felt trapped I felt I just bought a house and we had debt and I couldn't find a new job I didn't want to move you know, and other factors that just made me feel like I had to be here, I had to stay. And the only way to find freedom is through these things that were on the side. And do you think that those things met that fulfillment need? Did you? Yeah, it influenced my day, huh. totally. So I'd wake up 4.30, 4.45 a.m. Oh, wow. to hustle for like two hours you know seven five to seven a.m i would be hustling and feeling great by the end of it and it positively influenced me in my day job because i just i was a happier person i was like mm -hmm. okay you know i've done something today i haven't just 
done another chart check, I've not done another meaningless patient interaction, I was making a difference. And even though it was scattered brain, like <laughs> the first few years of my hustle were just, I was all over the place with different ideas. Many of them failed, some of them made progress. I just was constantly learning and I felt like I was an addict to learning new things, implementing them, trying new things. And I found a lot of fulfillment in doing that. So, you know, you're in this position now where, you know, you're basically an entrepreneur, founder, if anything, right? <laughs> sure. Um, of all these different uh, opportunities. Mm -hmm. What was that turning point though? Because you still had a day job and you were hustling on the side. Yeah. What was that day, that turning point? Like what changed that caused you to basically pursue these kind of opportunities full time? Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and watching the video. If you like the content, definitely hit the Impro RX button over to your left to subscribe and definitely check out more videos over here uh, to your right. Now, as always, if you have questions, comments, and even better, suggestions for future videos, definitely let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, until next time guys.